Alright guys, I'm back with another video of our favorite game, No Limit Texas Holdem. Felt like making another video of uh, poker because I've been grinding a lot lately and I just need to like sort of think about the game instead of just play it all the time. Um, I, I was asked a lot recently like how to get good at poker and like <laughs> as ridiculous as a question that is, the only re real answer is to play it a lot. Um, it's a stupid fucking answer, but, um, if I wanted to get more in-depth, you know, you ask a chess player, how do you get better at chess? He'll go over some ideas, like, play for the center, develop your pieces, castle your king, etc. It gets you, like, sort of in this mode of, like, how to think like a poker player. Uh, so, I guess my real answer would be... Well, I'm going to show you because I want to sort of get you guys uh, thinking more like a poker player. Um, so, the first hand in this series that I'm going to make, I think I'm going to make three, maybe three or four videos on this. these ideas. It's going to be a series dedicated to like sort of like common spots, like spots that you see... Um, like, when you, s s spots that come up a lot, you know, that, I mean, not a lot, but, like, that you'll, you'll actually use this spot. This isn't just, like, this weird close spot that, like, the answer to how to p play the hand correctly doesn't really matter. Um, you'll see this over and over, especially at these uh, lower state games. So, <clears throat> and, and, and the series is going to be centered on playing uh, out of position. And I think every hand in this series is on a paired board. Uh, I like paired boards because they sort of set up this dynamic, um, you know, that someone could easily have the trips usually if it's a card that's like in the in in the range. And it's cool because like the trips is 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 like the boat or the the nuts kind of. And and but there's so much removal with with trips that. Um, it just makes for like very interesting hands you could call light and stuff like that. So, anyways, the first hand we're gonna go over is hold. On, let me check this. <clears throat> uh, so I have king queen. This is a hand I played uh, two weeks ago at a house game. Um, I was. I mean, I can't really remember really remember the the depths, but I was around 200 big lines deep. Villain is going to be on the button. He is a roughly a thousand deep, probably deeper. He is a good player. I have only played it with him once. Um, he's good, and this night he could miss, could not miss. Um, but he's a solid thinking player. Um, but he he, he might have had more than a thousand. He couldn't miss, so he was playing kind of loose and weird at this time. Um, so, anyways, it folds down. We get one limper. And then he limped on the button. And I just want to talk about his limping range. Because he is a good player. So this is sort of the range that I came up with. Uh, here, I'll bring it into the... Oops. Get this into the picture. <clears throat> if I can, hold on. Uh, here we go. So... This is sort of the range that I constructed for him because it <laughs> he was just playing he played this so strangely and like for me to think of a range that he's actually limping the button and we could add nine eight off <coughs> nine seven off ten seven yeah these type of weird hands um <laughs> it it just seems like this is the sort of range he's going to have. It's it's so weak because I know the kid. Um, he's going to be raising like ace, nine suited plus. He's going to be raising like pocket sixes plus. Probably every pocket pair. Maybe not deuces or threes or four. So I've just put in fives too. He's going to be raising like every... He's going to be... I'm sorry. These are not in this range. Or yeah, he's going to be he's going to be limping these. He might even limp broadways that are unsuited, um, and, like, maybe, I mean, maybe these weird 
offsuit, bro? I mean, I just think he's raising there to gain fold equity. Um, so this is like this weird, terrible limping button range, which is like super weak. And, um, and, and like I, I do want to talk about ranges. So, so if we if we do simulate this range, um, I mean, King Queen against it is is uh is pretty good. It's pretty is a pretty good edge. I mean, his range is. I mean. I want to even take some of this out, like, God, is it's so, it's just so weak. I mean, it's 60, 40, right? You know, um, and I want to talk about ranges a little bit too, because we live in the era of, of a, uh, of the, the, the simulator, um, the solver. And, you know, as much as I could just copy the solver, you're never going to learn how to, uh, actually think about hands without like thinking on your own being able to like construct a villain's range by yourself so what you need to be thinking about when you are maybe i mean any of these suited hands um you got to be thinking about like what what are the hands like sort of in his range and now you don't have to memorize this kind of stuff you don't have to know like oh he's playing 10 8 off you just have to have like this idea that okay when when a, when a decent player is limping the button not raising the button it can't be anything good he would just raise and gain i mean you have positional advantage you are the button so instead of copying a solver and just plugging in the numbers because you can't memorize everything a solver does plus they just they play so differently than a human you have to think about ranges so obviously with king queen offsuit in the small blind, it's a clear raise. So I make it 20. <coughs> Everyone folds. To, and he calls. So we get a 2-4-7 um, uh, flop with this king of spades. So the king of spades is really important in this hand. I actually elected a bet, a uh, one-third-ish uh, one pot. Uh, I was not going to bet. At first, I was going to check and um, probably call. And I was like, you know, I think 15 betting one third is better because it denies equity. So this is like another thing you have to think about. Like, what, what would you, like, in his range, he's going to have a lot of spade draws here, you know, these weird suited hands. Um so I thought I should deny some equity, you know, even though I am laying four to one. I actually thought with the king of spades, I blocked so many hands that can actually call. Um, I guess I was wrong, right? <clears throat> because he check raises me to 65. I'm sorry, he didn't check raise. He just raised. <laughs> and I sort of, I sort of just knew I had to call here. This is uh, a very, very marginal spot. He'd look up his range. Here, I'll bring up the range with the with the flop. <clears throat> it's actually really bad for us. We only have 30% equity here, even though he's only playing 24% range. So this is a mistake, probably. Um, I want to say in the hand, one of these cards was different. Um, that was closer to a gut shot or something. But, remember, I played this a month ago, but I don't know. I just, I had a, I sort of had a, like, live read, and I ended up calling. So, I guess, like, what I'm trying to say is here is you probably shouldn't be calling here if it's 30% equity. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I guess, like, when he raises... I have to call 50 to win 126. So he's giving, I mean, I guess like three ones, okay. Um, which is fine with the range. But I just knew, like, this should be a call. Uh, he was just playing so loosey goosey. Like, what is his, what is his limping range that's really crushing me here? I mean, like, it's all these in here. But I knew, like, all his spades were there. So if, I mean, he was laying 30, uh, three to one. And we have 30% equity. 
you should probably call. Even though, like I said, like we don't really have the, um, we don't really have the, so we don't have nut advantage here. Like he'll always have the nuts more than us, and um, he will most likely on that flop, just like the three on the flop. He will most likely, so he has a nut advantage and he has a range advantage. But when he check raises us, it was such a small raise too. Like it was such a weird play, um, like giving us like a decent price. <clears throat> with the king of spades i just thought like against this range uh it's it, it's a call oops where did it go so it's an okay i guess it's an okay with call with the pot odds so i guess like to backtrack with the pot odds uh it, i guess it's an okay if, if this is the range and like this comes with pr playing a lot and understanding like like running sims on your own like understanding like that that this range kind of has this equity with king queen against this weird range you know and this is like something just comes with playing because i don't know it's 30 percent like immediately i just have this like idea in my head almost like intuitively because of how much i fucking play this game so <coughs> anyways we go to the turn and i basically have to check there's no questions asked uh he could be raising with some weird a7 um want to see we sort of just want to see what he does um if he barrels again it's probably we probably just fold there's just so many you just don't have a donkey range like like how could you how could you bet here like how, if you if you don't know what to do you, you weigh the options we have two options checking or betting how could you bet here i mean if you just can't so i'm not going to really go on and he checks back okay now now his range seems to be pretty weighted towards spades only okay right i mean it just makes sense that i'm sorry that spades is like only the cards in his range so if he has <coughs> only the suited hands i mean i mean how does oops oh my god i keep fucking killing it i keep killing it i mean what was it? The seven of, we'll just put in the seven, seven of clubs. Um, uh, like with this range, like four deuce. I mean, four deuce checks. I mean, four deuce bets. Uh, pocket deuces bets. Um, <coughs> seven five bets. Take that out. I mean, look at this range now. It's sort of looking a little bit different. Our equity actually doesn't go up, but like, I mean, five, three, three, three. No, that checks back. Three deuce, four threes, deuce, four deuce, out of there. Nine, seven, suited. I mean, and, and the thing about these, these hands is they're only suited to the spades. And 9-7 obviously can't have the spades. So this range is actually weird too. So I just thought, I just thought like every single hand with one pair in it bets the fucking turn at least. At least bets the turn. And the 8 comes on the river and there's just no betting again because what's going to call you that's worse? Queen high? I mean, is Queen High gonna call? Are you gonna get him off any pair right now? Even if you bet like 180, like what? What in your range? Think about it this way: What in your range on the turn bets checks the check calls a, a raise, checks the turn, and then bets on the Eight of Hearts, like only pocket eights, right? Which is just, I don't know. Of course, pocket eights bets. Like, I mean, there's not many more left, more combos left. A seven certainly bets. But, like, he, he, he has more of those in his uh, range than we do. So you can't bet here. I mean, I think you can't bet here, personally. If you disagree, let me know. And uh, he bets 100. <clears throat> I mean, this bet was just, I didn't, I couldn't believe he actually bet. 
Uh, so now we're getting two and a half to one, a little bit better. And uh, I'm sorry, three and a half to one. So I didn't know what to do here. I tanked for a really long time. And I thought to myself, is because he checked back the turn. And I think he knew, because he was up a bunch of money, he knew that I was one of the only other thinking players at the table. Like, he kind of just wanted to, like, hedge his bets, and then he bets, like, that 100 on that dot, not doing anything fancy with the sizing. I just think this is a bluff. I think this is only spades that missed. But in real time, if we go back to the the range, I still had these aces in his range. If you look at the the equity, I only had 20% against his actual range. Um, I just didn't know what to do, and if and and, and honestly, I folded in real life. I couldn't make myself call here, because the only thing I'm beating is Miss Spades, right? So if if the only thing I'm beating is Miss Spades, and 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 if this is his range. Which, like, who knows? It probably isn't. I didn't go super in-depth here. <sighs> I'm only getting... I only uh, have 20% equity. I need way better than 3 to 1. You know? <clears throat> I ended up folding. And he showed the bluff 9-5 suited, which was... Which was Miss Spades. And I seriously, like, couldn't believe that he actually... Didn't fire a turn. Like, how do you not fire a turn there? I don't have as many sevens as he does. Like, uh, it was just so poorly played by him, and it gets me kind of mad that I didn't call this here in real life, even though he did show it. And, like, look, I, I didn't even put 9.5 in his range. Like, his range is wider than, than what I put, so we probably have a little bit more than 20% equity. We might even have 25, but we're not getting 4-1. to one. We're getting, like, what, 3-1? to one? So you... So it's just such a hard call, and I know this could be exploitable, but I hope you understand like why I folded. It's because the range was so his range. I'm I'm only beating bluffs, so I did fold. He showed the bluff, and I was kind of mad at myself. I I th if with an ace high, I think I call. With ace high, I I mean I even said out loud. I think your bluff is better. I think you're bluffing right now, but your bluff's better than my hand. Like, I really thought, like, he has missed spades, but, like, maybe with the ace of spades. Like, like, like a weird ace. See, that's why I could go over the range better and just, like, really plug it in, and it's super tedious, and I don't want to. But, like, missed spades with the ace of spades, with, like, some random ace, ace high hand. Because I block ace king. I block ace king of spades. Especially, which is really important. So I'm, like, thinking, like, I mean, I mean, how could he bet here? So I, I thought, like, if his ace, if he's trying to, he, he's only trying to get me off of hands that are worse than ace high, and like, like he should know that ace high is call. So I did end up folding, and I think this is this is you could you could go either way, even though I, the math sort of isn't there with this range I gave him. Uh, I ended up folding, and I lost the hundred, even though like I didn't I didn't call, but. Yeah, so that's the first hand. The second hand I want to talk about is this hand I played <coughs> where there's a straddle on the button. The button was a super big action player. He's the biggest fish in the game. He's pretty deep, about $500 deep in the 3, 1-3 game. And I was in the small blind again with King Jack suited. Uh, he hadn't been raising his straddles much at all. And I think the first bad decision I made was to actually call, not the straddle. So I called the straddle, gets full. Of the, there's another person that calls in late position. Might have been hijack. I can't remember. And um, probably not cut off actually. And he actually makes it 45. So here's the here's the mistake I made. Okay, first of all, <clears throat> King Jack against his raising range offsuit is not a call. And I pride myself on preflop. Uh, charts because i have have so much of pre chart pre-flop charts memorized i think my biggest edge like most people's edge that win the game is the pre-flop 
game because it's the you know kind of easiest way to look at uh look at ranges in general is preflop so uh i think this is just a fold i think calling is fine this game was so soft he's the biggest action player in the world calling is just totally fine but when he raises even though he's he's he is a bad player i think this is just a fold you're in a small blind you he's never raising something that's really like that much worse than king jack so i just want you guys to keep that in mind the thing i want you to keep in mind is what happens on the turn so it comes king eight eight it's pretty really good flop for us actually um and I, so i check it over uh looking just to check call i mean remember like i said his range is um his range is pretty good uh pretty pretty uh it, it's actually better than ours uh so he has range and so he technically has range and position advantage i mean it's just like not really the spot you really want to be in but like against a player who sort of every king almost every king down to probably king eight king seven suited is in his range um i think it's like okay like like just to play this as a call like i said um it's not the greatest spot in the world even though he is super action uh and i call which nothing much to say about it other than you're playing king jack if the king hits the flop and you fold why are you playing it in the first place is it clubs on the turn so this is where i want really want to talk about the ace of clubs is a really good card because now we chop to like every single king yes he has ace king in his range but he has so little ace kings because um i don't know if i would weight it or anything like that his range and i'm not bringing up the calculator because this, i want to teach poker without without the range calculator because i want i want you to think about like imagine his range in your head like like yeah like he he has every combo of ace king or he doesn't have every combo of ace king i'm sorry because we block all the kings we block two combos of kings and are we there's two kings out there so we don't block two combos but um we also block like ace jack you know i don't think he's betting with anything on the flop uh with ace high on a king board he's not that type of player he's such a weak player and that's another reason i don't bring up the ranges these players are so random and weak that their range is their ranges usually don't have some sort of cohesion to it there's not a spot where their ranges are always the same i mean no one's is always the same but like like him him betting this board with ace high on the flop is just not gonna happen at these low stakes they just don't you have to think about the way someone who doesn't play poker very often thinks they're just gonna think hey it's king eight eight i don't have a king i don't have an eight like let's say they have ace nine ace ten i don't know ace queen even they're just not gonna bet it they're gonna check it back that's how these weak fish play you shouldn't do it that's why they're a weak fish and you're not so the ace is perfect because now we chop like every single king the only king so so what happened was after he checked he checked back it further instilled this this idea that my king is we're playing for half the pot here uh i know that <coughs> if he bets the river we're playing for half the pot and i'm gonna probably have to call but here's the question what is he gonna bet on what 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 rivers is he actually gonna bet well if he ha if he's weighted towards a king he's only gonna bet the rivers that make him a better two pair and what are the only what are the only like reasonable hands to have well in my mind what is it king jack which we block like a million combos of so let's just sort of discount king jack king 10 okay which we beat but we're 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 chopping to and king queen 
So I knew that pretty much every non-queen river, when I checked to him, sorry, my headset died. Um, so what I was saying is every non-queen river, we're just going to call. So probably a 10, I could throw a 10 in there. But it's mainly, his hand is super weighted towards king-queen. And this is why, in the first place, you shouldn't be playing king-jack. If, if, especially, like, you know you're, a lot of times your kings aren't good. You're playing out of position. You should probably just fold. You're not going to realize your equity. King-jack here is just a fold, and people don't understand that. It's so it's, it, was the worst, it was the worst river possible. And like I said, like, a lot of people would, uh, I think a lot of people just call here, you shouldn't, I mean, I don't know if a lot of people call here, but, like, I think some, like, station-y type of people might, um, and just say, like, oh, well, well, like, I hope, like, 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 you, like, you go with your plan on the turn, your, your turn plan is, okay, we're chopping the pot, but he could have, but he most likely has a, uh, king-queen, so, just have to fold when he bets when when he bets in and the queen hits the river so i did and uh he actually didn't show me his hand but he's a good friend of mine and he told me he had king queen but sort of like what i want to reiterate about this hand is that the ace is not scary and it makes the argument that you might be able to donk with the ace I know you guys, <laughs> I hate donk betting, but since we know he has king queen, I think it could argue to donk on the turn. Now, the question really is, is he really folding king queen when you donk it with an ace on the on the turn? Probably not. He's a weak he's a weak fish, so I I just don't think you should. I mean, what if he calls him? What's your what's your river play on any river, like even without the queen? You really gonna just like bet again? I mean, you could get him off a if it's not a queen, you could get him off a king maybe. But I just I just don't like donking that turn. It's, it's kind of a candidate though, so um, not gonna lie. It's you could probably do it at low frequency. I wonder what the solver would say. I, I don't want to go a solver. I don't want to run a solver. I don't own the solver, and I wouldn't run it for this anyways because copying a solver doesn't really. It teaches you, uh, it definitely teaches you a lot about poker, but it, it's just too hard to, like, remember exact spots, because they play so perfectly all the time. So anyways, just to reiterate this hand, the ace is not a scare card, it's the queen that was. And usually it's the opposite way. The king is above a queen, obviously, but the ace is above the king. So you, normally the ace would be the scare card, and it's not, the queen was. And so I folded Another fold. This time, it was a good fold. Bad pre-flop. Just fold King Jack pre when he raises. His raising range is just ahead of King Jack. His checking range when he checks back the uh, straddle, which is why I hate button straddles. Because I could just easily... Uh, <laughs> I could go on, around, go on a lot about button straddles, especially in shorthanded games. I hate them. Uh, and the game, and then the gameplay is so big. I remember like playing this hand and losing and being like so mad because it was the first, it was the first big hand. Like the the pot was just so bloated for no fucking reason, other than that he straddled. But anyways, don't play king jack under the gun or uh, <laughs> even against the fish. You should be three betting your three betting your uh, mostly your small blind range, uh, even if he is the big big mark of the game. Don't play King Jack, and the ace is not a scare card. The queen is a scare card. And so I folded, and it was the right fold. But you're still losing money by calling with Queen Jack pre-flop. Okay, the last hand I'm going to show is uh, when I was dealt pocket aces in the small blind. And we had a very loose passive fish calls from middle position. And there might have been another limper. But anyways, I raise it to 20, and uh, he calls. And we get a uh, really bad flop for us because um, <laughs> kind of looking at his wheelhouse in terms of, well, it's not, it's not a really bad flop, but it could be worse. 
But in terms of like who has Jax more often is him. Uh, I think we have more combos with Pocket Jax, which is kind of like irrelevant because quads is just so rare in poker. Um, we have more Pocket Nines. So we have like more nuts. But in terms of our combos of Jax is really only like Ace Jack. Uh, I don't think maybe King King and Queen Jack might be raising here. I think I think there's another limper. So I don't know if I would raise Queen Jack. Might just flat. It's kinda nitty. But uh he definitely has like all the Jack combos, like Jack nine, Jack ten, Jack eight, Jack Queen, Jack King. Um, we block ace, a lot of the ace jacks, so I'm kind of discounting ace jack. Again, I don't want to bring up the. So, anyways, long story short, he has positional advantage, he has range advantage, and he. But we have not advantage, and we our our actual hand. Um, is 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 decent, or he has, the, I guess, jack advantage. <laughs> He has more jacks, <laughs> but um, uh, he also has all the hands that are around j jack and nine for the straights. Like every fucking nine, ten, jack, ten, ten, uh, ten, queen, king, ten, uh, nine, ten, eight, ten, seven, ten, ace, ten, all those, uh, eight, eight, ten, and eight, I think eight, nine, eight, six. All those hands, uh, eight, seven, eight, those are all in his range. And like not betting here is, is like, I think a huge, huge mistake if you're playing live because he has all those drawing hands. So, um, even though he has, he should have more jacks than us, um, we do block H jack, which is great. Uh, we don't block any of the. Um, we, we should definitely bet here. I like to go small. Uh, because if you ra if you can raise on this, you're just fucking... It's the worst spot of all time. But anyways, uh, he's a weak player. So, betting small here, I think, is f is good. Uh, he will continue with all of his drawing hands. Um, and we get a f disaster turn card. So now, like, all the straights get there that I just mentioned. Uh, so, what I want to take away from this hand is always have a plan when you go into a flop, especially with a car, with a hand like Ace Ace, because, um, like for example, a lot of, I think even if you run in the solver, give optimal ranges, etc., they might have you checking that flop. And I actually think maybe even betting bigger was might have been better, but I didn't want to play a big hand, a uh, big pot out of position. I do that a lot. I know that I'm probably giving up UV for that, but um, like you just have to bet that flop. He has too many drawing hands in his range that uh, we'll just lose, even though equities are pretty tight, uh, because he has like way more jacks than you. This is a really bad card. I remember thinking in my, my head to myself, uh, please no eight or queen. Those are the two worst cards in the deck. There's eight of them left. I just needed to really dodge eight cards. I wasn't really too afraid of sevens, jacks. I mean, a seven. Uh, I wasn't afraid of that much of, of, a, of a king. And I wasn't really afraid of, yeah, a th I guess a third jack. It's kind of like stupid to talk about, but... Uh, Eight and a queen are the worst cards in the deck, and eight's there. So, I think a lot of newer players just still bet their aces here, and sort of like evaluate. And I just think that's like a wrong play. And we see, I check to him, and he checks back. That is really good news for us because he's the type of player that like he when he makes a hand, he has to bet it like. He, he's so afraid of it, people are drawing on him. But, like, also the board is paired. Like, like yeah, Jack-9, Jack-8 are in his range, but, like, it's more weighted towards, like, like better hands, Jack-10, King-Jack, etc. Ace-Jack, I block all the aces, though. Most of the aces. So, like, he, um... 
he would he would check he might check back a straight hair but like when he checks it's super weighted on him not having anything yet so like i said the key takeaway to this is like have a plan and our plan right now is to pretty much bet any non-queen river because uh when a weak fish like that checks back the turn um and doesn't bet as straight because he's he's nutted here he should bet like he, he what he doesn't understand is like his range like probably should bet um and again this is sort of like a marginal spot because like in optimal situations uh the the game does not play like this at all uh we get uh another just absolute trash card um i think it's time to just fucking fold don't you think we're never betting this card because if the eight wasn't bad enough now the queen comes every fucking card is in his in his range and um he quickly bets 55 what was it into 73 okay this is the type of player that can't bet without a good hand like you don't understand like he's not betting ace queen king queen here ace jack i mean i'm sorry ace eight ace nine nine eight nine queen he's only betting queen jack eight jack nine jack nine ten or i'm sorry all the straights and so when he puts money into the pot you just have to make it exploitative fold like i said the solver would freak out here the, the the solver wouldn't be here anyways but like this is just i know i could get heat for this hand for folding to this bet but like i remember this player and like um i don't want to say his name but like if you know me in real life you could ask me at dmu like he can't bet here without like better than like two pair like he has trips so we have top two or i'm sorry we have second two you can't have better than our two. We have the best two pair. But, like, he's only betting boats and straights here. Like, he, period. End of story, End of sentence. Like, he's never... He's always checking back his one pair hands, which are technically two pairs. He's always checking back eights, nines, a queen, um, pocket kings. He He's just... Like, if I if I plug this in his range, if I, if I had a range calculator, which I do on the other screen, but I want to do it... His range, I would plug in that his range is all straights, boats, and trips, so that our equity would be actually 0%. Like, even if I add in, like, two hands of something that makes it so that we have 5% equity, like, like <laughs> this player cannot bet without a straight. Or on this on this psycho, scary uh, run out, he cannot bet without a straight or a boat. So, like, you just have to make the exploitative fold. Like, GTO, this is not GTO, and these games are not GTO. You just have to fold, which I did. And uh, I didn't, I don't remember if he told me what he had, but I knew with certainty, I knew with absolute certainty that this is a fold. And I, I don't care what anyone or whatever any solver says against this particular villain who's super weak passive. It's just a fold. Um... I don't want to harp on it any longer, but the, the main takeaway is to is to have a plan going into the flop and not getting away in in love with your hand. Um, it's very easy for you, for people to just to like call here and be like like, oh I have aces and jacks like I beat all, I block like all the two pairs I block ace jack like 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 I block I block like you know it, no like he's not bet. You just have to know your opponent, and, um, yeah, so, uh, one thing I want to say on the other hand is that I think I didn't discount King-10, but anyways, <laughs> I just want to show, like, some common spots how you should think, uh, kind of tired, I probably should have waited to make this video till tomorrow, but I just want to get off my shoulders, um, if you guys think I played it strange in a spot, let me know, I think... The King Jack hand was pretty poorly played from the get go. This hand, I just think, like, I'm sorry, but it just happens. You're just going to lose with aces sometimes. And then the first hand, um, 
Let's go with your gut. Make that king high call. <laughs> uh, he probably doesn't have that many aces in his range. Um, should have just made that call. But yeah, poker's really tough. Uh, it's the hardest game in the world. Good players lose. Bad players win all the time. Uh, so yeah. I'll see you guys later.